Today, clinical audiologist Lily Hughes is back for her second segment of six to talk with us about hearing tests. Hello, my name is Dr. Lily Hughes and I'm a clinical audiologist here at Ear, Nose, Throat and Audiology, which is a department of Rutland Regional. Today, I'm going to talk about the second segment in my myth busting on hearing and hearing loss and it's going to touch on how we measure hearing. So, a common myth that I, I get a lot of from patients is that insurances don't cover hearing tests. That's actually not true. Um, many insurances, including Medicare, do cover the cost of diagnostic hearing testing. There's also a common confusion on where to go for a hearing test. There are hearing aid dispensers out there, such as Miracle Ear, Belltone, Avada. Um, there's also audiologists. There's quite a bit of a difference in those professionals. I myself as an audiologist have been in school for eight years for this, which is a doctorate. Um, after the doctorate we get some clinical placement, it's kind of like a residency, and then we learn um, basically how to go into practice and diagnose and treat hearing imbalance. In the state of Vermont, we're required to have those um, educational requirements as, long, as well as continuing education. Hearing aid dispensers are required to be 18 years of age. There's no educational requirements and they do have to pass an exam for the state. You do have those two choices, however, when making that choice, just know that a hearing aid dispenser is doing a hearing test solely for the purpose of fitting a hearing aid. An audiologist is diagnosing and may in turn treat or manage your hearing loss or balance issues. So, a hearing test is not painful. Um, it's actually a very easy procedure and uh, it's very quick. It's also um, something that I enjoy and a lot of patients end up finding that it's, it's, very, um, it's very full of information when we're finished. So the first thing is to get a case history. I'm asking a patient about their medicine, about any dizziness or imbalance, do they have ringing in their ears, any history of ear infections. All of those things are really important and kind of guide where we're going to go. So after that, I'm also going to look in their ears. Um, a lot of times people wonder if wax is the cause of their hearing problem, and it may be. But first, looking in there with a handheld otoscope like this. Um, we also have video otoscopy, which is also seen a lot in advertisements, and we do that on very unique ears to get pictures of what's going on. So otoscopy is number two. Number three, we're looking at ear pressure. So we kind of want to move into the middle ear at this point and see if the eardrum's vibrating okay. I'll do um, a couple pressure tests, one on each ear here with this machine. Uh, very painless, although some people with some ear pressure issues may uh, feel a little bit of the sensation. I can also check a middle ear reflex there too, which guides us on, on a little bit about hearing loss and, and other um, pathologies. I'm then going to have the patient come into a sound treated booth. Sound treated booths are not sound proof but they give us a little bit more realistic idea of someone's thresholds because it is quieter in this room. So I'll have them sit in here, I'll put some type of headphone on their, their ears and start the test, looking at um, speech as well as different tones and kind of graphing all of that to see what's going on uh, with their ears. And this is my machine here that I do the magic with. So that's, you know, an idea of what a hearing test will be like. Typically, someone should see a physician right after. It's really recommended by uh, the federal, uh, the FDA actually, to, to see a physician afterwards, and we, we follow that um, recommendation. But that's everything in a nutshell, and hopefully you feel more comfortable at your next hearing test.